Back everybody to Limeade 1.0 presented by Lime City. So on deck we have Metal Gear Solid 3 HD Edition by Major Zero. We'll be playing on very easy difficulty. Um, he'll be joined by uh, Apache and Mayu for for comms. So it should be a pretty exciting run. I like the run quite a bit. Um, and without further ado, take it away, guys. Hello everyone. Welcome back. Um... I'm glad you've all been enjoying the, uh, the Limeade so far. It's been pretty great. Uh, Major Zero is going to run MGS3. Uh, very easy. Uh, category we know and love. Um, I'll be talking through the majority of it uh, since this is a run very close to my heart, but I'll let Major do a quick countdown to signal that he's going to start. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and count down. Three, two, one, go. And so it looks like he's running a New Game Plus save. The reason we use New Game Plus for After Very game, Easy um, two, in Marathon is because we two. save you about eight fast. seconds on the final this boss because we already have her camouflage. Core. We'll use a non-lethal victory against the boss, which awards her camo, the snake camo. Um, when that drops in New Game, it gives you time to pick it up. So New Game is only, New Game Plus is only faster for that reason because you can you already have the camo, so you don't have to pick it up. That is literally the only difference between New Game and New Game Plus that we've found so far. Um, aside from that, there's no tangible like difference to using the the additional camos from New Game Plus or using the Patriot. It literally doesn't matter. Um, the, the run is exactly the same. Um, me and Major have put a lot of time into this run, finding um, all the time saves. The ca ca the characteristics are very easy, are that um, the bosses are so exceptionally precise, and you can, from just missing a single shot, you're going to lose seconds upon seconds. Uh, Major currently has a uh, world record in both New Game and New Game Plus, with one hour and ten minute runs, uh, which is an exceptionally fast time. Um, I'll talk through some of the some of the little things that we do to speed up this run so much um, from the higher difficulties. Um, for, just to show you the difference, uh, the European Extreme run is one hour eighteen. Uh, sorry, I'm back in the past here. It's one hour seventeen thirty, so we're talking like seven minutes faster for the lowest difficulty, and we really will uh, steal every second of time save that we can. Um, another characteristic of this run. Um, the PlayStation 3 has something called the load trick. So before we actually start our run, we'll play the game all the way up to the torture, and then we'll use the fake death pill in the cell, um, and then start a new run. And that will make it load faster, and Major is running on the load trick now. Um, so if you notice that his load, load screens load really fast, it's because of that. Um, he's also using an SSD hard drive, uh, which makes it load faster as well. And if you want to get the best times, uh, you really do need an SSD. So these guards here are no trouble at all because uh, one trank will knock out the guard on the lowest difficulty and you can hit them anywhere. Something we found is that if you... Normally when you walk over a guard's body, it slows you down. But in Metal Gear Solid 3, when they're immediately being knocked out, their uh, like hitboxes don't exist. So you can just run through them like they're not there. So that's why we'll try and trank guards kind of at the last possible moment. Um, that we have available to hit them. Here it's a little bit awkward, so we'll just roll over them rather than walking over the corpses. That's an intentional alert, um, which we do take to make this room a little bit faster. There's no point not taking the alert, because it'll clear off as soon as we get into Rasvet. Um, but th there is a risk that the guard can like knife you, so you have to be careful. Mostly we just run straight through him, which makes him run off rather than trying to kick us or, or knife us or whatever they do. For that little strat there, your movement has to be absolutely precise to get past that guard uh, and not get seen. You'll notice you, who was that comes up um, because the guard does kind of notice you at the max range of um, alerting to you. Um, so he gets the blue ex he gets the blue exclamation point instead of the red one, uh, which makes him start walking towards you. But as long as your movement's perfect, you can get in there, and that's kind of the fastest way to do this room. Um, so again, big characteristics of this run. Um, are that the the movement is like so optimal in order to get the best times. Uh, this is a fun run. Like if you want to start running Metal Gear Solid 3, if your heart's set on running this game, definitely start with this category. 
um, it will teach you a lot of the really important fundamentals of how to play this game, which will help you moving up the difficulties. Um, I can't recommend this run enough. Um, it's pretty easy to get going with. It's very difficult to get the absolute best times from. Uh, so that's the end of the uh, the virtuous mission. Not a lot, not a whole lot going on. It's very easy. It's just about being as precise as possible. Um, the cure menu is the same on every difficulty. Again, that's just something that uh, it's important when you're learning this game. Um, if you pick this game up on very easy, learning how to do this cure menu optimally um, will stand you in good stead for every single difficulty you move on to as well. Um, so now we're going into Operation Snake Eater. Um, a fun thing about Very Easy is right at the start of Operation Snake Eater, there's a cutscene with the boss where she destroys your pistol. Um, on Very Easy, we have something called the Easy Gun, um, which is only on this difficulty um, as standard. You can get it on the higher difficulties, but you have to achieve a Markor rank first. And it's banned on every single difficulty apart from Very Easy because you get it as standard. It's uh, you know syn synonymous with the with the difficulty. Um, so this first scene, after we get the gun taken away, uh, we can just immediately switch to the, the very easy gun. So it's one of the, the faster rooms. Whenever you're coming up to like a hill or an incline, um, the snake's movement speed is like stuttered. So while we don't have the box, you'll see major rolling quite a lot because um, it's a faster way to move up hills. Rolling over flat terrain is slower than just running. Um, so we have to use those rolls uh, really wisely in order to get the best time. And there's a lot of discourse um, between runners talking about when is appropriate to roll, when is appropriate to use the box. And honestly, we don't know. It's something that still needs to be um, explored more in this run and really kind of like timed out. Um, I think I feel like the game as a whole, th there really isn't that many of us actively running it. There's probably like, you know, five, five six people at a push that are really like running this game often and I still feel like it has so much further to go um, for new strats. So the easy gun gives you 80% camo as you can see there we just got to walk past that guard and we're essentially invisible but it is quite a tight line you have to take to the trig. Um, you really don't want an alert here because um, when you go into Sokolov's room in a moment if you have an alert it won't actually let you start the uh, the ocelot unit. The ocelot unit is the the first boss so it's a collection of um, Ocelot unit guards. Uh, you have to take them all out either lethally or non-lethally in order to progress. Um, normally on other difficulties you would pick the box up here but on very easy we don't get it until later because there's actually another pickup which is much easier to get to and also we're not even gonna like access the menu um, until we pick up the Mosin Nagant off the end so in order to get every single second we do so few menus on this difficulty or we try and eliminate them as best as possible. This fight actually spawns you with the pistol equipped so you don't have the menu and that's what we're going to use to take out these Ocelot guards. The most important thing in this fight is getting a really clean roll out of the window which will allow you to uh, shoot the roof guard. The roof guard's like key to making this entire room fast. If he runs off it's very difficult to get in a good position to shoot him and now we're going to wait until these guards congregate around this barrel and then we're just going to look out see if there's any additional ones. It's unfortunate to get that guard but Major uh, Major moved, in, moved into a really nice position so that even if there was any guards remaining he could just immediately take them out. Um, that fight has been like science down to that speed. Um, when I started running this game and for a good long time after I was running it um, we were still doing all kinds of crazy strats with stun grenades and all sorts of stuff. Um, it was really Plywood who first kind of looked into making that fight much faster and we've just been building on that from there. So that was, that was a really clean um, Ocelot unit fight. Um, this strat here is something which is new to the run. Uh, there's a, a speedrunner called Appel who is more of a Tomb Raider player but he's dabbled in some Metal Gear as well. He's found some really interesting stuff for this run. One of the things he found was that the right side of this room was just way faster on very easy. So we're going to purposely take the right route here. Most difficulties and most of the runs you'll have seen in this game, they go to the left side. Um, but it's just like slightly faster to go this side. I think it's like one or two seconds faster. And this like the kind of optimizations that we're always looking for in this run. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're obsessed uh, with that kind of thing. Uh, so yeah, if you can find a single like second time save for this run, we're, we're all ears. We're always looking for more. Um, so it's a little bit different of a route. We're going to make our way over to Ocelot. 
Um, who's the first like real boss? The Ocelot unit counts as a boss, I guess. But Ocelot is a, a real boss with a health bar and is another one that really, if you blink, if you miss it, that's why I've started. That's why I've started kind of explaining it now. Um, we're gonna loop him similar to how you do on other difficulties, but because we have the easy gun, the easy gun for some reason does way more damage to Ocelot than any other gun. But then the easy gun does less damage than the Mark 22 to the pain. Like the, the way guns work in this game is really, really odd. They just have set values per boss rather than set values overall. I hope that makes sense. I sometimes go into full Metal Gear Solid 3 speak, um, and that doesn't make sense to people, but just let me know. Uh, if you've got any questions, just let me know. Where possible, we'll just take uh, perfect straight lines across rooms in order to get into the next load zone. And this room's a really good example because the perfect line cuts you just right of that first guard and because of the easy gun he can't actually see you. Major will unequip his easy gun before starting this fight. It allows you to immediately re-equip it with R2 rather than menuing for it. You shoot Ocelot once, throw a stun grenade, turn around, um, shoot him in the body. And now after the second stun grenade, we'll just shoot him in the head twice and that will end the fight. So it's two body shots and two headshots is all you need for that stamina bar and that was an absolutely perfect ocelot fight. Uh, this next section of the game is super dark. On very easy, we want to avoid the animal's camo pickup. We don't want that in our inventory. Um, we're not going to use any of our camouflages apart from exactly what it equips us with. Um, something I didn't mention as well is when um, Major was in the lake earlier, he'll have a leech attached to him. The leech drains your stamina over time. Um, it's very detrimental to have low stamina because it makes your aim shake. Uh, once you lose half your stamina, which is the bar underneath Snake's health, your aim will begin to shake. Um, so we, on other difficulties, we would remove that immediately. On very easy, the fastest runs use the leech rank, uh, which is we keep the leech attached for us for the whole game. The amount of time that it takes to remove it isn't actually worth removing it. We want those seven seconds or whatever it takes to menu it. Um, the easy gun actually replenishes your stamina over time. So as long as we manage where we have it equipped, uh, we can keep high stamina through, throughout the whole game. So it's just another optimization um, that was found when uh, you know me, Plywood, Major, and others began congregating on this difficulty, trying to find the best times. This next boss is the pain. Um, the pain is a pain on all difficulties. The most optimal way to do this fight with the easy gun is to go for headshots, but the hitbox is very small, so you see a lot of people just spam body shots um, using a mechanic in this game called the quick reload. Um, basically, if you turn your gun on and off with the equip and unequip button, uh, while staying in first person, you can make guns fire or fire a lot higher fire rate than they're normally capable of. So the reload for the easy gun is like normally quite slow. Uh, but we can just like spam shots with it. So you see Major kind of drift towards some headshots, he'll score some headshots if he can, but he'll mostly go for uh, body shots because it's just way more consistent. If you miss headshots on the pain, um, the pain will, uh, he can roll away, he can start walking, you want to keep him as still as possible uh, in order to end that fight really quickly, and that, that was another really clean boss fight. Um, you know, he does make this look easy, but it's quite hard um, to get used to these strategies um, and certainly building the muscle memory for, for quick reloading and quick reloading consistently against bosses it really does take time and it just shows that Major plays this game uh, you know a lot um, so a difference between this difficulty and high difficulties we would normally have the box here which allows us to uh, go up this terrain at full speed but overall picking it up later and doing the menu when you get the most in the gun or some people just do it when they pick it up um, actually works out way better than climbing out up onto the boxes just before the ocelot units pick it up so there's actually two spawn locations that was another uh, strategy you know that's found by appel there's a little out of bounds glitch there you hit the load zone so it doesn't actually matter if you didn't hit the load zone when you jump out the wall there um, snake would hit a death plane so under every single uh, a bit of level in this game. There's a, like a death plane, so if Snake goes out of bounds where he's not supposed to, it will just kill him. Uh, this whole river, we'll just swim down it, we'll lose all our health, we don't really care about that. Health is more of a, a concept on this difficulty anyway, we're not intended to get shot much. Health is um, an illusion. So, yeah, there's just, forget that health bar, 
Um, that's just what we use so we don't have to get out of the water. Um, if you unequip the easy gun at any point during this river when you go under those spotlights, um, you will get seen. Uh, so we're going to damage the end now. We want to shoot. We want to do damage to the end early. We don't kill him. We don't go and pick up the SVD or shoot him early because the strategy that we actually use to kill him later is just like so much faster than getting the SVD. Uh, Very easy has one of the coolest end strats. It's one of the most unique fights in the game, and it's actually harder than what we do on European Extreme because it has to be so damn precise. And if you miss a single shot, you have to reset the room. So uh, there's so much time to be lost on the end, and I can't express to you enough, it is very difficult on this difficulty to do well. Uh, we don't care about the tank in the alert going into the warehouse, but we have to make sure we reset the radio call at the right time, otherwise there's like a shield guard that comes out the door and knocks us on our ass. Not good for business. So that's where we'll pick up the box. Um, much better pickup, it's just so much more on the route um, than picking it up before the ocelot unit we go through this area twice and we have timed it out and worked out that it's faster to get it on the way there even though we could theoretically get it on the way back because we're not actually going to equip it um until until much later in the game until as i say after we kill the end um when we kill the end we pick up uh, a rifle called the Mosinagants, which we need to uh, fight the Fury with. So that's why we do our menu there. And if you can do as much as possible in one menu, it's actually really beneficial. Oh, he went for everything. There's a there's a small glitch you can do with that ledge. You can actually roll on top of it, but the angle you have to take to roll onto it is very very precise. But some a bit bit more fun for the marathon. Uh, and again, that was found by a Pell. Generally, if I if I mention a strat and don't say you found it, it was probably a pal. Um, the guy's a genius. He's found a lot of stuff for this game. So we're going to be heading into the lab to meet Granin. Um, something Major's been doing, which he might not have picked up on, is he goes into load zone sideways when he's in the prone position. If you're in a forced first-person view and you use the D-pad left and right, Snake will move to the left and right, and it's actually way faster than going forwards. And that, that's something Major did first. Really. I'd, ne I'd never seen anyone do that before Major did it. And I actually saw him do it, and I wasn't actually sure what the inputs were to do it myself. Um, but that's a, a really nice little strat. Uh, so we're not going to use a disguise in the lab. We don't need to. Um, the easy gun makes us pretty pretty invisible to guards. The only thing that can kind of go wrong is um, if your auto aim messes up on this first floor, uh, you can end up getting an alert to the guard. So it can be pretty dangerous. And something you can do in marathons um, is get the uh, handkerchief in order to make the sorrow fight faster. Um, but for IGT, for speedrun purposes that you want to upload to the le leaderboard, um, the sorrow fight doesn't actually count for the IGT. So it doesn't matter if we speed that up in a in a normal speedrun; it won't change. It won't make our time any faster, basically. Um, but for marathon purposes, and you want a lower RTA. It actually works out um, just a little bit faster. It's about eight seconds, something like that. But the biggest risk is uh, to pick it up out of the locker. It's really easy to score an alert. And if you get an alert on the way to meet Granite, you have to reset. Um, so for eight seconds, is it really worth all the risk? And I don't think it is. Uh, what Major did there is called a bump caution. Uh, it's a very easy only strategy. If you run through a guard, through a guard's back with the easy gun equipped, by the time he recovers from being jolted, he can't actually see you because you're too far ahead as long as you run in a perfectly straight line. Um, so you can do that all over the place. We do it in the mountains as well because it doesn't really matter if you have a caution, you're absolutely fine. Um, and it's a lot faster than rolling through them or sometimes chancing it with the, the dicey auto aim in Metal Gear Solid 3. It's an extremely um, dicey little auto, auto aim system to be honest with you. It will, it will fail you at any time. Uh, we're going to pre-equip our stun grenades now. The reason we put those in our inventory now, or in the slot now, is because we want to be able to um, throw the stun on the first frame of standing up from the fake death pill we're going to do at the start of the fear fight. As long as you hold um, the menu while you're skipping the cutscenes to get your fake death pill on the first frame, the fear will always jump to the closest tree. 
uh, which speeds up the fight a great deal. Another optimization that Major found was as you're recovering from the fake death build, you can throw the stun grenade off to the left and then look directly at the fear. What we used to do is throw it on the floor in front of us and then we would have to like look away from the stun and then turn back to it. So this is a small optimization, but it does actually count for quite a good time save on a fight we really thought was completely optimized. Certainly the most um, important thing about doing that strat, what I do, where I turn around and throw the stun grenade, is that it makes the strat completely free. It's possible if you have to like readjust mid-fight, you could just not get enough shots off and uh, have to redo the fight. Not kill him. Yeah, um, and that's the like worst case scenario, right? If you have to... If you if he breaks out of that stun loop, um, you have to reset the whole fight. Uh, that's a little glitch that Major did in Warehouse 2. Again, found by Appel, kind of tasked out. Um, we absolutely loved it when he found that. It's just like you drop off that box and you can uh, immediately grab the ledge. And what Major did was like the absolute optimized version of it, where you there's two animations for grabbing the ledge. There's one where he like leaps over the ledge, and there's one where he immediately just puts his hands on it and grabs it. Um, it's like a frame one grab or whatever. Um, it's quite hard to do that. It's, it's, it's a quite a precise setup. Um, so it doesn't look like much, but these small things really matter in this category. Um, and certainly if you want to get a time uh, as optimized as Mages is, um, you really need to know about this stuff. And, you know, it takes practice. I think we're... We're going to assume this time can come down to a 109, right? That's like the assumption that we've got at the moment. It's free, uh, yeah, for sure. Mage says it's free. I, I assure you it's not, but it's doable. <laughs> we, we can do it. <laughs> Again, Mage is re-equipping his stun grenades, but he's not having them in the menu. So if he presses R2, he'll get his stun grenades. This little optimization that was found, that if you start fights like Ocelot and The End, uh, and the boss, whatever's on your previous, you can immediately quit with R2, so you don't have to go to the menu again. Um, and it's a cleaner menu to go from like the, the easy gun to the stun grenade, and you're just ready to do this really, really optimized hard fight. And I assure you, doing this strategy correctly is harder than uh, beating this boss on European Extreme. There might be more inputs, but there's just way more room for failure on very easy. Uh, we'll throw three stun grenades, and then we're gonna land a body shot on the end he's going to go into prone and we're going to dodge his bullet and now we need to score three headshots um back to back in order to win that fight that was really nice it's 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 so precise it has such huge room for failure um like you know how, how many times you mess that up before major like it's, it's so easy right uncountable uncountable yeah. And that's it, like, th this this run is so optimized, you see he does the first menu there and equips the box for the first time, just before we go uh, up all these hillsides. Uh, the box makes you move really fast up hillsides. Uh, and we also equip the Mosin Nagant. So instead of doing two menus throughout the game, or uh, three if you do the cure as well, we just do one, um, which opening the menu probably costs, it, not including what you actually do in the menu, but opening and closing the pause menu probably costs about five, six seconds. So really every second counts. And just for the first time ever, I'm going to shut up in this run, and we'll enjoy the aesthetic of the ladder.
I just had to do it for once. Like, I get so much stick uh, during, like, all my marathon runs of this game and any time I've done, like, a live run of this game for talking during the ladder. I thought just once I'll show up during it. Um, so, are we all good for me to go back to talking at full speed about this category again? I, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, mountain, um, it's all uphill. Uh, we want to avoid guards as best as possible, but another thing we're going to do is point the camera at the floor, uh, which keeps the frame rate as high as possible. Um, when you keep the frame rate up like this, uh, your actual time at the end of the game is better. So lag lowers your time. Essentially, the IGT just starts at the start of the game. It doesn't stop except for a brief period during the Sorrow fight. So we theorize that um, it may be uh, beneficial to look down in rooms uh, aside from the ones we already do and maybe even that the most optimized perfect version of this run would be us just looking at the floor as we run through it which is a scary thought but it's also like we probably would do that to get the best times as well like we don't want to but we probably would um, so who knows what the future of this run will look like right now we're not looking at the floor all the way through it um, but may just definitely optimize this whole uh, mountain looking at the floor because this is an insanely laggy area of the game and it's really obvious how much it lowers your frame rate. Another thing you, you may not pick up on him doing is when he bumps the guard he'll take a few steps before he rolls. Um, the guards in this game are pure trolls and sometimes you can just roll through them like they're not even there and on very easy sorry I'm losing my breath here on very easy that can be fine um, because you, even if you get like an alert in this area, it's fine. Or even if you get like a, a caution or evasion or whatever, this strat works fine. And a glitch was found accidentally. I want to say Raichu did it first and then you kind of like tasked it out and worked out how it actually works. But if you get an alert anywhere in Mountain 1 or Mountain 2, the door still unlocks in Mountain 3 as long as um, you don't like lose it and regain it. So this door at the end of this room, Mountain 3, is normally locked um, if you if you have an alert. But if you get it any earlier, um, it still opens. So that was kind of found by Raichu and explored by Appel and Major as well. Um, you know, we're, we're, always, we're always finding new stuff. It's a very exciting time in the world of Metal Gear Solid 3. This is one of the uh, laggiest cutscenes in the game. If you, if you don't have Load Trick, uh, that load is very, very slow. Uh, we're going to make our way down to the Fury. Uh, we go into the 3D camera here because it's a little bit easier to get back down this mountain top uh, using this camera. Because we're going to roll up to ledges that we shouldn't really be able to roll on. The game kind of does let you get up on terrain that you're not supposed to as long as you approach it at the right angle. And now we get the stairs, which is one of the most fun obstacles in the game. Everyone does this like, do, does the travel down the stairs slightly differently. Um, the most optimized way is to kind of do perfect rolls over the rails all the way down it. But it's so hard to like accurately do that every time. Something I didn't mention before this, before this Fury fight, because we didn't cure the poison, um, our aim will shake because we have lower than half stamina. Um, but we don't care. Like, the, the fury is massive, and we can pretty much fire the Mosin the gun, uh, like blind fire it, no scope him down the center. Uh, but if you go into like the the actual sniper scope view, it will shake quite aggressively. Um, as you see there, Major didn't doesn't care because the fury is just so big, and we're so close to him that it, it just doesn't make a difference. So even though even though um, we forego taking out the poison, uh, which should negatively impact us. Um, you know, it, it doesn't matter. We'll just fight the Fury with our aim shake and it's fine. Uh, we're at the point where even on European Extreme, um, we're looking at not removing the... No, the most optimized version of European Extreme now would be you don't remove the poison or the arrow bolt. You used to have to do it to be able to loop uh, the end, but with the new first screen end strat, it doesn't actually matter what position the end spawns in. So for some reason, the crossbow bolt in the leg, if you don't remove it, the end spawns in a different... He doesn't spawn in a different location. His position when he spawns is different. Who, who knows why? MGS free things. Uh, this room doesn't look that hard, but it actually is kind of awkward uh, to get those um, 
to get those uh, shots at the guard and also to roll over that barricade can be so finicky. It's really easy to just roll into it. Mage has equipped the RPG because he's going to do something a little bit more interesting with this room. A little bit more fun for Marathon. We wouldn't recommend this in, in a speedrun unless you're um, really spicy. Because it's not saving you a whole lot of time. It's just nuts. He's going to use the RPG to send Rykov's corpse flying across the room. Which puts him in uh, a better location to, to move him to take his uniform. Um, you know, I don't know if a Major or a Pell found that, but both of them really looked into it. And it's just an absolutely hilarious strat. I'm really glad you did that in, in the Marathon here, because that's, that's something too. a bit more special. I'm so glad something I got a that in a Marathon. Special. A Pell found that one, it's great. We love it. Yeah, so it's quite hard to pull that off. Um, the shots are really precise. Um, so, yeah. We love everything that, that a Pell finds. He's like a legend. Yeah, he's a very, very clever guy just looked at the game in such a unique way compared to everyone else and began to just find the craziest stuff. Uh, something we didn't say is Appel found a way to skip the pain uh, completely, you skip the boss fight using two fake death pills. We don't do it in very easy because the amount of time it takes to actually kill him at an optimized level uh, works out a little bit faster, um, but on higher difficulties it's certainly a valid strat, especially on hard. So we're going to get a nice unskippable cutscene here. Um, so we're just talking about Appel being really good, but like he hasn't even found a way to skip this unskippable cutscene yet, so I don't know what he's playing at really. Um, same on every difficulty, you get tortured for a bit, um, but we'll be just fine. This has been a damn clean run of, uh, of MGS3 so far, Major. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of it. This is a pretty decent yeah, one from Marathon. Yeah, I'm impressed, man. Something I'm going to start doing when I run this at Marathon is asking the tech to turn the game sound down for this whole section because I just sit there feeling awkward. It's like, haha, there's nothing really to say about this part, lol. I'm just being tortured. And like, in English, it's particularly scary. It's like, it's pretty gruesome. I think it's because you've, you've, you've got no vision and you only hear the sounds. But it's a pretty gruesome part of the game. And it really does make uh, Vulgan just seems that, like such a scary boss. Uh, I feel like he's on the higher side of the intimidating scale when you look at uh, MGS bosses. A little bit of trivia there. Volgan actually commented on the state of Snake's body. He actually has three different dialogue options for how much damage you've taken in the run. So if you take very little damage, he'll say uh, you have a beautiful body like a newborn baby. And if you take a load of damage, he'll say you've certainly seen your fair share of battles, haven't you? It's a little bit of trivia there. Pretty interesting little detail. Yeah, I mean, unless something's gone really wrong, we'll always hear the same dialogue in a speedrun. Um, so, like, if you're just in super into speedrun this game, you probably haven't heard those other dialogue options as well. Um, but this game is full of little, little things like that. One of the things that makes it so interesting, right, it's just absolutely full of stuff like that. So to escape the cell on Very Easy, we're going to use the codec. Uh, 144.75 I think it is. Um, there's three ways to escape the cell. One's fake death pilling, one's throwing up, and the other is to use the codec. Um, I think I was the first person to sort of employ this uh, in the very easy speed run. Um, and then I found it's actually pretty good for normal too. Um, but a lot of the time before we all really got our hands on it, the lower difficulties were just like carbon copies of the European Extreme run. Um, which is obviously really suboptimal. Uh, so the codex is a good strat to get out. Uh, we used to equip the cigar uh, in order to lower our health as much as possible for the sorrow, but as I mentioned earlier, none of the time during the sorrow counts to your IGT. 
so you can walk to the end of the river and pick up the camo and still have a competitive you know world record time theoretically um, none of the time counts for dry GT. There's a relatively new found, I think Major found that using the emulator, I want to say. Uh, you notice that the DIGT reset back to whatever it was when you entered the fight, basically. Yep, and that absolutely would not have been possible without a Pelsa. He was instrumental in figuring that out. Yeah, as I say, if I mentioned anything, it's some, it's some way related to a Pel. He really is a, an absolute master of this game. And he, you know, he doesn't really, he doesn't really run it. He's just interested in the inner workings of it. And, you know, he really has been instrumental, not just for finding that, but for all the kind of times we get these days. In some way, um, he's directly responsible for. So, yeah, uh, also we used to... There used to be like a massive discrepancy between my time and Major's time on the board and like he had the two runs put together before we knew about the Sorrow uh, and the, literally the only like real difference in the run was I'd used the slower Sorrow strat. So it was quite funny just exploring the game and finding out weird stuff like that. I bet there's still just tons and tons to be found in this game. This game is infinitely interesting to me. I am, I've been running it pretty much since I want to say December of last year. I have absolutely no sign of stopping anytime soon. I am enjoying this game so much. But yeah, as I say, if you want to run this game, I'd recommend PlayStation 3 HD collection. Some people are running the PS2 at the moment. That's pretty cool. I think the PS2 has a lot more to go before it's at a more optimized state. There's all kinds of skips and, and cool things that can be done on the PS2 that haven't seen any, you know, real runs completed with them in yet. Um, but I think the PS2 has a particularly bright future. Um, HD collection. We're getting to a much more optimized state, especially for very easy. We've still probably got another minute and change to go yet. Um, but you'll be learning some, some pretty, like, optimized stuff if you pick up this run. Yeah, you got the extra voice lines because you have so much health. So that's the Sorrow. It's a bit of an anti-boss. Um, the fastest way to get out of it is to just die as quickly as possible. And now, because we didn't remove the fake death pill or the tracker, which was planted by Ocelot... <laughs> <laughs> definitely Ocelot and not <laughs> It definitely wasn't Volgan, as a rude YouTube commenter informed me. Um, there is an Ocelot unit here. Um, the only risk is that we get knocked over by the shotgun guard. Uh, Major's going to do something insane here called log roll. The way Major does that saves about two, two seconds and change. Um, but it's so much easier to mess up. A lot of people do a much safer version where they roll more to the left. It has less room for failure, but doesn't save as much time. And then, uh, I think that really speaks to Major's playstyle. Is he will always go for the fastest stuff. It doesn't really matter what the risk is involved. He is always going to play at the most optimized level possible. Uh, I think that was pretty evident from your tanker run earlier as well. You were just going for the absolute best stuff, uh, despite being you know newer to the run. Uh, something I love about Metal Gear Solid Three is the variety in playstyles you can employ. And yeah, you can really leave your own mark on the run by the way you play. And I've long said that uh, if you show me two videos of two people playing this game, I can tell you who's playing. Uh, you know, as long as they're a known runner, I can pick them out. And I proved that just recently, <laughs> but we won't go into that. <laughs> so we're going to pick up a really important box here at the end of this corridor. It's probably the most important item in the whole game. Um, I don't want to say how much time it saves exactly, but it's probably a minute plus. Um, Maybe more, like yeah, two probably minutes more. plus, that's a lot. The, the box that you pick up there lets you go uh, transporting the truck all the way inside of the, the Shago Hard hangar. Um, so you don't have to go all the way through the building to get to it. Um, also, we're going to do our menu after climbing the ladder rather than before. Although on other difficulties, you would do it before you climb the ladder because we want to remove the M1911 from our inventory, which gets put in there no matter what after you climb the ladder. 
Uh, we're just going to use our fantastic easy gun and go right on the corner of that tank to be able to get past those guards a little bit quicker. Uh, something I didn't mention earlier is animation cancelling. So when you climb up an object, you can cancel the, the end lag of that by equipping the box. Uh, it's not used that often, but... Oh, you forgot you forgot to equip the box. <laughs> yeah, I, was, um, I had yeah. Euro in my mind when you'd already... <laughs> in Euro, you would already have the box on, so you just tap L2. Yeah, so when you get to the top of there, when you climb up, you can immediately equip the box, which cancels the animation of the climb, or the, the, the end lag of it. Um, that's used so often in Euro, and it's so subtle how it's used, but there's, like, in Mountain 3, if you don't climb the ledge and immediately equip the box, you're not actually fast enough to, to do the caution strat. Just for example, um, so things like that, the, the, just like the nuance of the run, it really, really does matter. Something that only Major does, uh, that I've seen so far, is when he plants the C3, he turns Snake around during during the animation. I don't really see anyone else do that, but it actually does speed up this room by that small fraction that really matters. And again, he, he just plays in, in a very optimized way. Uh, this room's actually harder on very easy than Euro, just because you can't scare all the guards off with a caution. It's kind of funny how that works out. Not that this room is particularly difficult on any difficulty, but uh, it's rare that you see a, a room that's just like harder on the lowest difficulty. There's just that and the end, I think. So for Volgin, um, Unlike other difficulties, we can immediately CQC slam him uh, rather than doing the CQC push and spam SVD shots at the, end, uh, at the head. Sorry. Um, as the difficulty goes up, he reacts to being thrown to the ground faster and faster. Um, so you have just enough time to headshot him while he's on the ground on this difficulty. So slamming is like optimal. You can still do the CQC push strat, and it's a very like clean way to do the fight, especially when you're learning. Um, as I say, Major doesn't do what's safer, he just goes for the dangerous stuff. Um, so we're going to leave the SVD equipped. We don't want to damage the Shago HUD here, we don't need to. Uh, we can do all of that on uh, Runway Phase 2. You can only do um, a, a maximum 33% of the Shago HUD's health um, damage before the actual fight. Um, so we don't need to do anything here, we're just going to equip the SVD because it's the last thing we had menued. Um, and we don't want to waste any time in the menu because this whole room's an auto scroller and any sort of me additional menu we do and stuff is going to affect that negatively. So we shoot the shotgun with the SVD, that won't deal any damage to it. Um, it's just for pure banter. Uh, you can only damage the shotgun with the SVD and hit him on the, the front of the set. None of these guards actually matter. If we don't shoot them, um, we're not going to like slow down this area at all. Even these guards on the bridge, it doesn't matter if you kill them or not. Like you can just completely leave them, um, and they're not going to deal enough damage to us to hurt us. The actual most optimized way uh, that we do this room in the speedrun is we just look at the floor the whole time. We had a beat-in for the committee of MGS3. Runners got together and we decided that that's absolutely boring in a marathon, so we're not doing that anymore. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna look at the scenery the whole time, even though it's not absolutely optimal. The difference between um, spending your entire time in the cinematic camera um, through this section and looking at the floor is 25 seconds. So it is a huge difference to spend all your time in the cinematic camera where it changes and shows you all the action shots to literally staring at the ground is a 25 second time difference so it's absolutely massive and the world record holder for European Extreme, Hikari um, is a Japanese player he doesn't really uh, take a huge involvement in the community he doesn't, he's not you know, part of the MGS, uh, Metal Gear Speedrunners Discord he doesn't actually know about that so in his world record run which is a 117.30 He's got the cinematic camera on for the majority of the bike chase, so he's getting somewhere near that 20, 25 seconds in time loss. So the fact that he has that time and he doesn't know about that time save is absolutely nuts. Uh, but we do think that the uh, the most optimized time for European Extreme is going to be like a, a mid 116 anyway. Um, 
Just thought it was interesting to know. So this is the only section in the bank chase where um, killing the guards faster uh, actually speeds it up. So doing that first first section of guards quickly uh, really does matter if you want to get out of this section as fast as possible. This second set doesn't matter. Uh, you notice Major re-equipped the easy gun, and that's because we still have that leech on from earlier, which is draining our stamina. If we drop below half, the Shagohad boss fight would be very, very difficult. So we're just re-equipping the easy gun to keep our stamina as high as possible. Um, and that menu, uh, compared to actually removing the leech, it is just such a huge time save. So the most optimal thing to do if you want to lose as little health as possible while spending as much time looking at the floor is to shoot the gunners off the bikes. There's only four bikes that can spawn in. Um, so if you take the gunner off all of them, no new bikes can spawn in. Um, the drivers still shoot you, but they do so much less damage. Um, so in Euro, you'll see uh, quite a lot of people, they'll just take all the gunners off, uh, which is the most optimal way to do this runway. And as I say, once we get to section two of the runway, um, when the Shagohad comes back, that's when we'll actually start dealing damage to him um, and take that 33% damage off the Shagohad. In this difficulty, we don't even have to take that much off him, because during the fight, one rocket will do 25% of his health. So the lowest, the least amount of shots we can make it is three. Um, and the Shagohad, I want to say recently, the Shagohad was kind of known about for a long time, but then as runners left the game and new runners came in, there was like a knowledge disconnect um, between like the new and the old runners, and we were all doing the Shagohad wrong for a long time. It was like embarrassing how bad we were at it. Uh, but you can actually infinite the Shagohad by holding the back of it. And I was like, through, through practicing and learning the fight, I was beginning to discover a way to do it. I was saying to Major, I was like, I'm pretty sure I can shoot the back of the Shagohad the whole time. Uh, like, I found an infinite for this box and it was literally known about in like 2014. It's just no one no one told us because like the old run is called guns. Dude, like 2006, <laughs> they were doing it for years. For yeah. years. It's ridiculous how we didn't know. Yeah, it's so embarrassing. It's like, we, we just thought people were just looking out on the like, fight. I was beginning to find a start of setup for it and then I posted it in the Discord. I was like, does anyone know how the hell this fight works? Because uh, I'm losing so much time on it. And then VPP, the legend, uh, posted like a full guide and we've all been nailing that fight since. Um, but yeah, you can infinite the Shagohod. Um, somewhat of a... I, I, I hate to use the word frame perfect to describe everything, but the, the initial shot you have to get on the Shagohod in order to set up the loot is very, very precise. Um, and it's, it's such a late stage of the game. And if you miss it, you lose so much time. So it's it's like the, one of the most stressful shots going. Uh, because before, like, all our time save was within the loading trick setup. So we would do runs, and even if we made mistakes, we wouldn't lose our load trick. But now the Shagohod has, like, this absolutely precise, perfect pattern that we have to get. And all of a sudden, like, if we fail it, we have to set up load trick again. So the game's got a lot harder to speedrun. Uh, this is just in Euro. In in very easy, you still want to get this perfect loop, but you're not going to lose minutes for missing it. You're still not going to be able to get world record if you miss it, though. Um, I mean, it is that precise. Um, and the Shagohard, the more missiles you have to fire, the more lag you generate, you're going to lose even more time. Major will show the setup here. Essentially, you want to hit that uh, gap in its treads, and that's perfect. And then you want to hit the back, and then hit the back again and then hit the tread again. So you can hit the back as soon as the invincibility wears off, and then hit the tread again, and Eva will just park behind it for the final shot. So you don't have to do like a full lap around the Shagohod. Um, so that's like basically what the infinite looks like. Um, and that was a perfect setup. Here as well, like, you, you only have to hit uh, Volgin once in the head and once in the chest. Oh, once in the once in the head, once in the body. If he turns and face you like this, um, he will get iframes on you. Um, so it's just unfortunate that like he managed to do this full like circle around, because when you shoot the tread, he looks to where you've shot the tread. So if he manages to, to 
turn his Shago Heart to the left enough. After you hit the tread, he's literally looking right at you, so you can't deal damage to him still, even though he's like technically stunned. But that was a nice fight. Um, good job getting that uh, infinite setup. I find it quite difficult, and I think it's more than anything, is the absolute pressure of the run up to that point and knowing what, what it means if you miss it. Um, what you're actually doing isn't that technical, but it just has to be perfect. So yeah, getting to this section of the game at 49 minutes, it's not even that long ago that it was just completely unheard of. It's not that long ago I was popping off about killing the boss in under an hour. Like, <laughs> this game has just come on leaps and bounds recently. And I definitely want to shout out Major, obviously doing huge work on this category. Uh, Plywood, done so much work on it. Appel, I'm not forgetting anyone, Major. <laughs> I don't think so, that's whatever. But yeah, come, come play it, it's so good, it's so fun. The Major, you, you were someone who started on Euro, right? You were like staunch Euro, big boss runner, the wooden pair of it. Um, and then when you learnt the run, uh, you know, I think you saw a lot of what we saw in it as well, but it's just like crazy optimized, really fun run. Yeah, the crazy optimization is actually my favorite part about it. I love competing for those high time, for like high end scores, you know? Times, I should say. It's, it's crazy how optimized this run is and how, how good the competitors are. I always like uh, points to MGS2 very easy, which saw a, you know, like a huge surge in, in popularity. And I think with very easy MGS2, there's a lot of big learning to do. There's like there's like four or five bits of really big learning. MGS3 is just tons and tons of micro learning. It's just all this like nickel and dime optimization all the way through it. The menus are much more complicated and the bosses have so much less room for it. So little room for error. Whereas like it's very easy, you, MGS2 you have like the Harrier, and you kind of get like one chance to um, get the absolute uh, perfect Harrier. Every boss in MGS3 is kind of like that. Like it, it's it's a it's a very fun run, but it's a very optimized run. Uh, my runs crash. Can you still hear me? Yes. Yeah, cool. Um, it's, it, my, my switch just froze for a minute, I just bought my internet might have dropped. Um, these platform guards are tossers on every difficulty. And a, a big problem with them is the actual the actual light that they shine on you grinds the game to a halt. It's so laggy. Um, so as I say, we normally would just look at the floor in the speedrun, uh, but we had a meeting and we voted and we said we're not looking for it in marathons because it's too boring. Uh, Major was chair of that meeting. Uh, he absolutely refuses to do it. Uh, so we're going to shoot them all, but we still don't want that situation where the light parks above us and blasting us with lag. The, the lag light. Um, here, Eva will point out uh, a branch. But we Wait. don't care. The voice line's funnier if you don't, you know, if you drive through it. But a mere twig in the road and you can't drive over it. <laughs> bit of foreshadowing for her story a little bit later. So this is the final section of the bike chase. Uh, in very easy, it's definitely a, you know, a kind of low point of the run. We, as I say, we literally just look at the floor um, we gain every single little frame of time save that we can. Um, the end game um, has the fun of trying to make it go left around the tree. Um, and the absolute optimization of just keeping and moving the entire time. Um, and then the boss, I think the boss is just such a great fight. It looks so cool in the speedrun, um, the way that we approach her. Um, and I, I think this game's so good at making like, w when you're playing this game well and, and fast, it's just so plainly obvious because it isn't doesn't really have any glitches, it doesn't really have any like um, skips and things like that. That all the time you get in Metal Gear Solid, all the time saved in Metal Gear Solid 3 is from playing the game as well as possible. Now look 
these cinematic camera angles. They look so good, especially on the uh, the Xbox One. The Xbox One makes this game look absolutely fantastic. It's a shame that it's not faster for the speedrun. It's a shame it's got some awful problems with uh, controller acceleration. For some reason, the Xbox has this inbuilt thing like if you hold like a direction for longer than like half a second, it will increase the amount you move in that direction by like tenfold. So you you aim which was like zoomed up. It's so hard to get used to. And I find the uh, the Xbox is really difficult to run on because of that. That's it for the bike chase. We've got a little mini optimization here that was found by Raichu. Uh, Raichu found that if you feed Eva the noodles here in this cure menu, while well, you have to do the cure menu, you don't have to pause later. It might not seem like a lot. It saves about eight seconds. Um, and it saves eight seconds in every single difficulty, which is freaking crazy. <laughs> it's absolutely mental time save. Uh, especially finding something that's universal for every difficulty, but it's one of those that you found it and you know It was definitely him that put everyone onto it, but it was like why has no one tried that before? <laughs> uh, I think this game is just full of absolutely full of Things that are like ready to be tried to save a crap load of time uh, I'm just gonna go for the one of the most difficult strats in the world here, which is getting Eva to go to the left side of the tree um, scholars and scientists around the world have spent thousands of hours trying to make Eva go left of this tree and uh, we can't find a consistent way to always do it but it must save at least four frames so it's a real big important one here he's going for it he's going for it that was so clean I have so literally clean. never gotten that before that is the first <laughs> time I've ever gotten that I think that's the first time anyone's ever gotten it to be honest in a run popping off about the uh, the left side of the tree Bit of a bit of an in joke, but bit of a bit of a bit of a meme we make. But she really does have like a magnet when when she walks towards the left side of the tree for some reason. It's something like magnetizes her over to the right. Um, who knows why? Weird AI interaction. This game's absolutely full of them. And we're coming up to the absolute final screen of guards in this run. Uh, we're just going to take Eva safely through this room. Uh, we want to keep her moving the whole time. Alerts will slow us down massively because Eva will just stand there and start popping off with our Mauser. Um, Eva's like a... You see Eva do a lot more shooting in Metal Gear Solid 4, but that was like really established in this game that she's like a crack shot. Um, and obviously you see her in the early cutscenes where she just annihilates the guards with a gun. What, what is it? What is it Snake says? Use the... Use the recoil to create a he says something he basically says that holding the gun sideways made her shoot better yeah i can't remember what the actual quote is but it's absolute crap it's not how guns work um dude, i can't remember what it is but it's a funny quote uh, but in mgs4 she's like a, a she's still like a super crack shot and you see her uh, you know killing people all over the place i like how they kind of stay true to that part of a character and i do think eva's pretty cool in metal gear solid 4 Wow, I'm complicating. I'm complimenting Metal Gear Solid 4. This is a, a weird marathon run. I don't know what's happened. <laughs> uh, just for safety, and because we're waiting for Eva to walk over here anyway, uh, we'll just take out those guards. Because you may as well. You got nothing else to do. You can't do anything until we're at the mercy of Eva moving. Um, she can just wander off. <gasps> At the top of that hill, I think it's happened to you once, Major, and me once. <laughs> once? It's happened to me loads of times. She's done it multiple times back to back for me in one run. Oh, well. It sucks. Um, I've only had it happen once and it was awful. But she can just, like, literally walk back to the start of the stage and you have to go all the, ra all the way around and get her. It's like, it's like two or three minutes of time loss. It's ridiculous. I think it's probably, if that happens, it's probably faster to kill yourself and reset the room. It's that bad. Oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, this is the final boss, the boss, um, and normally on higher difficulties you see a looper with the Mosin the gun, but Major found that if you use the easy gun, it's one easier, and two, it does the exact same damage. So you do the do the loop exactly the same, except you use the easy gun, which has the benefit of a dot sight instead of trying to no scope her with the fucking Mosin the gun, which is really easy to mess up. Um, 
we have to wait for our iframes after the stun goes off. If you shoot her too quickly, you'll knock her down and break the loop, which is a bit of a nightmare. That's time. That's sick. That's time. Sorry, I should have given well, you some more sense. notice. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, we're pulling time here. <laughs> <laughs> that was a really, really great run. Um, 58 boss. You know, probably a fever dream, or like when not even that long ago, we were like, this is the most optimized we could ever hope this one to be. And look, we're still improving it. We're still improving it. And, you know, it's been a wild ride, right? It's such a fun game to play and find your stuff for. I hope I didn't talk too much for you in this run, mate, but um, it's been a pleasure commentating with you. Uh, you know, I love talking about this game. Uh, the gameplay was exceptional. So thanks for having me with you, mate. Hey, thanks. No, I love having you here, man. You're the commentary that accompanies my gameplay perfectly. I love it. Because I can just play the game and I know I can rely on you to commentate like perfectly. So it's great. Seriously, great job on that boss. The time was stopped a little bit late, uh, but as I say, that was like a 58 boss easily. Um... We'll jump to a little intermission and we're going to have the final run of day one of Limeade, which is Platonic Guy doing MGS2 trainer percent. Never seen before run. Um, we're going to use a trainer in order to break the game as much as possible to show you what an any percent run of MGS2 would look like. Um, so stick around for that, please. <laughs> 